Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. Welcome back to the Penetration Testing Bootcamp, uh, more specifically the Windows Privilege Escalation section. That is a subset of the uh, you know, of the Penetration Testing Bootcamp. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to uh, look for passwords and credentials that have been stored within the Windows registry, right? So uh, again, we have already taken a look at how to exploit auto runs and always install Elevated, uh, but that really just involved utilizing the Windows registry to uh, identify important information or pertinent information uh, regarding specific Windows services like auto runs and always install Elevated. More specifically, we were essentially trying to find out whether you know auto runs were enabled or uh, trying to identify what programs have been configured as auto runs. Uh, and we also uh, saw the same with the always install elevated feature. We are essentially utilizing the Windows registry to identify whether always install elevated was enabled. So now we're going to be taking a look at, you know, uh, specifically targeting the Windows registry. Uh, but uh, again, we're essentially just looking for important pieces of data that have been stored uh, within the Windows registry. So again, the Windows registry can be used for a lot of, uh, you know, a, lo a lot of functionality. Uh, but as the documentation already uh, specified within this task here uh, illustrates that uh, for some reasons, uh, sometimes the password does not get stored uh, in the registry, and that is pertinent to this particular lab, uh, the registry can be searched for keys and values that contain the word password. So uh, you can essentially perform a registry query under HK local machine, and you're looking for password, and of course you're limiting that uh, to strings, right? Uh, and it also provides you with information here. So if you want to save some time, query this specific key to find the admin auto logon credentials. So if the system has auto logon configured, uh, then you can essentially find the credentials within the Windows registry. Now this particular registry query and uh, you know essentially searches the the entire uh, you know uh, the entire HKLM registry or database, if you will. Um, you know that will probably take a lot of time. And in my book, I've already covered, you know, the process of password mining on Windows, and I've covered uh, various techniques and tools that you can use to, you know, identify credentials that have been stored, not just in the Windows registry, but in configuration files. So uh, this is something that's very inefficient, and you'll actually see that right now. So I'm gonna be covering a lot of techniques, and I will be deviating slightly from the techniques highlighted within this particular task, and you'll see why. All right, so I currently have an unprivileged uh, session on the target system. So, you know, get use ID. There we are, get privs. You can see that there. Okay, so I'll open up a Windows command prompt or a Windows command shell here. We'll give that a couple of seconds. There we are, and I'll paste in that registry query. It's essentially searching for all occurrences of passwords uh, or the string password. Now, the problem, as you can see here, is that this is a lot of information and most of it is going to be useless so when it comes down to searching for credentials within the windows registry you need to know what you're looking for so it provides us with an example and in this case the example is the win log on uh you know configuration which contains the credentials in some cases uh, and of course win log on or auto log on rather is something that you'll not typically uh, find enabled on you know enterprise systems it may be the case but it's very rare so we're going to be deviating slightly. Let me just check that. So you can see that we have about 258 matches and going through all of this information is quite tedious, right? And you have to know what you're looking for. So it's much better to have an understanding of the uh, of the actual registry keys that contain credentials. And we'll get to that in a second. But let's try out uh, the actual, uh, this particular registry query that uh, essentially, you know, takes a look at the win logon feature. So... Uh, again, if you take a look at the actual um, information displayed here, you can see that this is essentially configuration information. That's typically what the Windows registry is used to store. And then, of course, you have uh, additional information like the default username. In this case, it's set to admin, right, which is pretty cool. Uh, so that's displayed in clear text. And then, of course, you can look for the actual password, right? So let's see if we can identify that here. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to find it here. Um, it probably doesn't look like uh, we have that displayed. It's probably been, uh, it's probably not displayed at all because I can't see any occurrences of the password. Um, so there we are, we have default username, password expiry warning. That's a configuration. 
uh, shell is it opens up explorer.exe that makes sense um, nothing else there okay so yeah this is one of the problems with this particular task that I did not like it's only really cov covering one particular uh, you know registry entry now this is where the WinPay's utility really starts to shine because and you'll see why in a few seconds uh, it automates the process but not just that it also identifies uh, important uh, or rather it essentially looks for important uh, you know registry entries or registry keys and it's looking for specific occurrences of the string password and it does it intelligently so let's actually take a look at uh, at this and you'll you'll actually see what I'm talking about right now um, if I say winpeas x64.exe we can run the default check but I really recommend uh, let me just type that in correctly I think I had a typo there so uh, winpeas x64.exe uh, we can run the entire gamut of checks but uh, the check that I'm particularly that I really wanted to highlight here is going to be firstly uh, Windows creds right so we'll let this run and you'll see the type of information that will be displayed so let's take a look at this here all right so firstly it'll check for the Windows vault not found checking the credential manager nothing there saved RDP connection so this is the the, the information that you you really should be looking for right so uh, I'll give you RDP information um, and then it'll check for DP uh, API master keys. It'll give you the actual path to the master keys themselves. We're not going to be exploring DP API right now, but uh, that's also quite important. And then, of course, it'll look for Kerberos tickets. Uh, it'll look for saved Wi-Fi credentials. Um, and then, of course, uh, let's take a look at some of the other pieces of information here. There we are enumerating the security packages credentials. So net NTLM version 2. All right, so you get the um, you get the NTLM version to hash there, okay, for the current user. So nothing really useful there, but uh, let's try one interesting one, which is uh, down our alley in regards to what we're looking for. All right, so winpeas uh, x64.exe, and then we can specify files info. Okay, so let's hit enter, and you'll start to see why winpeas is so powerful and why I recommend that you use it. All right, so interesting files and registry. Number one, it'll check whether PuTTY has been installed. And if it is installed, it'll uh, essentially enumerate the sessions and the username and passwords. And immediately, we get the username and password for the admin user in clear text. Okay, so that, that is pretty much game over. We can authenticate with the target via RDP because we have access uh, via RDP. Uh, alternatively, we can also utilize, uh, you know, CrackMap uh, exec or PS exec to authenticate legitimately. And I'll get to that in a second. It'll check for putty SSH host keys, SSH keys in the registry, nothing there. Uh, enumerating Office 365 endpoints, nothing there. Cloud credentials, nothing. Unattended files, I already covered this in the first video where we found the base64 encoded password, I think for the administrator, so we don't need that there and then of course we have the sam files the sam database files uh, themselves uh, it'll check for possible password files in user home directory so you can see uh, this is essentially just credential settings so nothing interesting there and um, yeah it'll go through and check you know third party uh, it'll check for you know third party configuration files or programs that utilize you know configuration files and uh, again that is essentially that so yeah nothing else in terms of credentials but we were able to identify the credentials from two points or two uh, files really one was from the putty uh, you know session or rather the configuration file so username and password from that session and then from the unattended um, you know dot xml configuration file we get the base64 encoded password which i've already covered how to decode so uh, we can authenticate with the target. Now, uh, the typical authentication method that's highlighted right over here is WinEXE. I think I've covered that before, but I wanted to show you something even better than that. And that is the Python implementation of PSXEC. So PSXEC is a Windows utility that allows you to essentially authenticate with the target remotely by either providing a, a clear text uh, password or a an NTLM hash or an LM hash if it's an older system. So you can just download the Python script. It's a Python 3 script, and I'll show you how to authenticate with a target system uh, with the clear text credentials and how to obtain a command shell. 
And of course, you can obtain a meterpreter session using the PSXEC Metasploit module, but I've covered that quite a bit, so I won't go over that right now. Okay, so we know that the username is admin and the password is password123. So I've already cloned or downloaded the PSXEC Python script here. So I'll say PSXEC.py. If we hit enter, that'll, that'll give you the documentation. I recommend going through it, right? Uh, and it'll give you the usage instructions and a few examples. So we can say psexec.py uh, and then specify the administrator. We can essentially log on like SSH, so admin at uh, the target IP, which I'll just copy here. Go back into TryHackMe, copy the IP there, and uh, we can paste that in there. And now we can obtain a command, uh, a command prompt session by saying cmd.exe, so we're executing that. Now it will prompt us for the password, so I'll hit enter. Password123, hit enter. And uh, there we are, requesting shares. Of course, PSXEC authenticates via SMB. I've already explained that, but if you're wondering why it's requesting shares, that's why. So it'll find a writable share, in this case, the admin share. It'll, it's going to upload a, uh, a payload, and it's going to open up SVC Manager, creating the service, starting the service, and we get a command prompt session. And of course, if we type in, you know, get user ID, or rather, who am I? This is not a meterpreter session. Uh, you can see anti authority system. Whereas if you would have logged in via RDP or something like that, you'd pretty you'd pretty much be able to do whatever you wanted. But this is a much better technique uh, to use. And of course, you can also utilize CrackMap uh, exec. I'll probably be making a video that covers how to utilize CrackMap uh, exec in the future because it is a very very useful tool when it comes down to uh, exploiting or utilizing credentials to authenticate with Windows services like SMB, WinRM. Uh, SSH, etc. All right, so we've obtained uh, anti authority system privileges, so we've successfully elevated our privileges. And what was the admin password we found in the registry? Well, we didn't find a password, uh, and that's why it actually specifies it here, but we were able to find it without their help. So always remember don't rely on one technique, always uh, have a plethora of options and tools that you can use uh, whenever you're in a fix, so to speak. Okay, so that is passwords through the registry. Now let's move on to saved credentials. Uh, this is really where I um, this is really where I uh, really like uh, you know uh, I really enjoy this particular section, especially finding credentials in configuration files, uh, etc., etc., etc. Right. So uh, we'll be taking a look at this in the next video, and this concludes the uh, you know the password mining section for the Windows registry. So. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments or suggestions or feedback, please leave them in the comment section down below. Uh, if you want to reach out to me, you can do so uh, by contacting me via Twitter. My Twitter account is linked in the description section. I would also recommend joining our Discord server. We really have great discussions on there and the, there are a lot of really cool people on there that can help you with whatever issues that you have. The link to the Discord server is in the description section. If you'd like to support this channel, you can do so via Patreon. Our Patreon link is in the description as well. And that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very, very much for watching, and I'll be seeing you in the next video. A huge thank you to all of our Patreons. Uh, your support is greatly appreciated, and this is a formal thank you. So thank you, Shamir Douglas, Ryan Carr, Sandor, Michael Busby, Sid Saab, Doozy, Dafim Bari, Dustin Umpress, and Michael Hubbard. Your support is greatly appreciated, and you keep us making even more high-quality content for you guys. So thank you. Thank you.